Good morning, this is Jeff Keeney with the LSU Ag Center Botanic Gardens. This morning we're going to take a virtual tour of the gardens and let you know a little bit about what we've been doing during this quiet time and also about what goes on at the Botanic Gardens. So I'm going to start with uh, the Steel Burden Memorial Orangerie right here in the background. Uh, Steel Burden was one of the family members of the property uh, that donated to uh, LSU about a little over 50 years ago. Um, he was very good friends with Hayes Town, and when Steel Burden passed away, uh, Hayes Town designed uh, this orangery in memorial to Steel Burden because of their friendship. And so the orangery has become our icon pretty much for the Botanic Gardens, representing um, all things that Steel loved as far as art, architecture, and also gardens. Um, this spot is very important to us as well, not only as a gardens for people to enjoy, but it's also the central focus of where we have many of our events. So um, anywhere from our public events that we have, from uh, garden fest, um, to a lot of private events that we have out here. So this is part of our rental facility as well. It makes a beautiful setting, especially for weddings. We have lots of weddings out here. People enjoy having these garden type weddings um, in a setting where you're surrounded by flowers with a beautiful uh, background of the orangery and also um, we have an outdoor open-air pavilion. Um, these two areas combined together with all of the green space make a great setting for any type of event. So let's start walking towards uh, the Rose Garden. Um, the design of this garden area was kind of a steel burden-esque design if you will in that it's kind of a semi-formal design. Uh, steel like to use a lot of base plants that we're familiar with like crepe myrtles, live oaks, um, hollies, um, and so this kind of gives you an idea of that that type of framework that he used for the garden. So he also liked to use long view sheds. So if we walk through here, you'll see we have a long view shed to a great lawn. And through the gate lawn, we have one of Steel Burden's signature pieces uh, that he liked to use in a landscape, which was the sugar kettle. And beyond that, your eye follows to a statue in the back. And so that statue then brings your eye to the back and stops you at the back of it and makes you want to walk over to see what's there. So during the year, um, we do two color changes in our landscape beds. Um, we do a lot of annuals in here. Um, we use a lot of the newer annuals so people can get an idea of what they would like to plant in their yard or in their landscape beds. So we've got a lot of different new salvias and vincas that we planted in the landscape this year um, to give us that summer, uh, spring summer color. As we walk towards the Rose Garden, um, I'll just mention that we are part of two uh, national rose trials. Um, one is called ARTS, American Trials for Rose Sustainability, and AGRS, American Rose Gardens for Sustainability. And so these two national trial programs um, are looking at um, the different types of roses that rose breeders are coming up with for home landscapes. And they're especially focused on roses because sustainability is in their names, uh, roses that are more sustainable in the landscape, so that have more disease resistant, insects resistant, and also don't have to be deadheaded and managed as the traditional hybrid tea rose goes. So if we walk into the rose garden, we have 11 different uh, rose beds out here, and each of those beds have a little bit different theme to them. Um, we have the trials um, that are all the new plants that have yet to be labeled, and we also have uh, the plants that have become winners over the years. And so you can come out and see what roses are on trial, what breeders across the country have submitted to these trials, and also you can see the ones that were selected that were do best in our climate. So if we keep going over here, uh, that is on the right, right hand side of the rose garden. Um, you can see these first two rows right here. We just are newly planted, so these are all the trial winners from the past five years. Um, so if you want to walk this way, <clears throat> we'll look at some of these winners. And so we have um, Looks alike, uh, Apple Dapple was one of the winners um, right here. Um, so they have a lot of curious names, if you will. 
if we keep walking over here um, you can see and we're labeling most of these but this one's uh, an AGRS winner for 2016. Um, this is Thomas A. Fleck and so if we look right here you can see it's got kind of a beautiful lavender flower to it. Now these roses look quite young because they are. We just planted this bed this spring so if you come out um, when we open up hopefully very soon um, you'll get to go through and see all of these beautiful win uh, winners of uh, the different roses. So where would we find updates? So you can find information about these roses at our website. That's lsuagcenter.com backslash botanic gardens. And we have a list of all the winners, the pictures of the winners, and also information on all the different winners. And then what about like openings and closures? Where can you find them? Oh, so for openings and closures. So our time frame and our schedule. Um, right now we're closed until further notice but we're hoping we're going to be opening up in another week and you can also go to our website or our facebook or facebook or instagram site and find updates on information when we're going to be opening up and the different activities that we have ongoing dr owing says let us have a rose info am in the gardens this fall okay we actually if you go to our facebook we also have um a, a special rose session where Wanda Ellis talks about the different winners um, of the rose trials that we have out here. So just go to our Facebook and you can see that video posted there. Yes, thank you. So we are in the midst of National Public Gardens Week this week. Uh, National Public Gardens Week is set at this time every year in May and it celebrates all of the public gardens and arboreta across the United States. And so we are a participant in that. Um, this week, uh, we are doing a virtual uh, National Public Gardens Week, of course, because of the, the situation we're in. But um, we are today celebrating uh, Volunteer Appreciation Day. And so if you go to our Facebook or our website, you'll see a list of the different programs that we're having each day in the gardens. Tell them Okay, the Facebook name is LSU Ag Center Botanic Gardens. So, not just Botanic Gardens, you got to get the LSU Ag Center in there because that's part of who we are. So, um, yes, if you go to that Facebook site, today we're celebrating our volunteers. And as we walk through the gardens, you'll see a lot of beauty that is maintained by a lot of volunteers. So this Rose Garden, we have a group of volunteers, a group of ladies that come out and they deadhead these roses and help us prune them, fertilize them, and do all of the maintenance and care for them over the year. So we wouldn't be here or whole without our volunteers. So we greatly appreciate all that they do. And we hope that you guys do too. So we'll walk on through the rose garden. Um, as we walk through the rose garden, um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the other things we're doing for National Public Gardens uh, Week. Um, we're also uh, had a session on mint juleps um, la yesterday. This day is volunteer day. Um, tomorrow we're going to have um, some uh, lessons on how to cut flowers from your own backyard and do a design. Uh, we've got Harriman's florist that's coming out with Missy, one of their top florists, and she's going to be doing some design work that she'll show you how to take plants from your own backyard cuttings and make a wonderful design for your own home. Um, we also have another one for kids, Kitty Bull, on Saturday because we can't have our children's day. Um, she's going to uh, let everybody know how to build a fairy garden with your kids to put in your garden. So that's going to be really cool too. And again, um, some of the people that are doing these videos are our volunteers that help support us. So walking through um, the Rose Garden, I'll also mention that we are 440 acres of green space in the middle of Baton Rouge, for those of you who don't know us. Um, we are not just a Botanic Gardens, but we are also one of the research stations for the LSU Ag Center. So we conduct a lot of different research besides doing the Rose Trials. Um, we also research uh, fruit and vegetable research uh, in horticulture areas, but we also have some small crops research out here. So for example, one of our faculty is doing research on different varieties of field corn. Um, other things that we do out here, we work closely with the Department of Renewable Natural Resources with the LSU and LSU Ag Center. 
And so we have a lot of different wildlife uh, research uh, projects going on here. One that's very interesting right now is we have uh, Dr. Ashley Long, who did a video on Monday on backyard birding. Um, she's working with her students on uh, urban bat populations. And so she just put up with our arborist uh, three different types of bat houses out here to determine uh, what types of bats we have in the area and looking at bat conservation in, in urban woodlands. Um, speaking of urban woodlands, uh, to the back of the orangerie, you can see the big trees in the back. Um, we have about a four uh, mile trail system um, that takes you through the woods and identifies all of the native trees um, that are in the woods. So um, if you walk through the woods, you'll not only get a beautiful kind of release in nature, um, but you'll also be able to learn a little bit about the native trees and shrubs in our woods and how they're important to our landscape. Also, I'll mention in the rose garden, uh, we're passing some of the different uh, roses. This, these are themed rose. These are all the Cortez roses um, that you can come out and see. These have been established uh, for about 10 years now. And this is a series of shrub roses that will do very well in your landscape. Yeah, we sure can. So a lot of these roses, um, we prune our roses in February so that we get a nice flush of bloom, usually in uh, end of March into April. And so we just had a beautiful flush of bloom um, and we're getting ready for a second bloom. Uh, this is one of my favorites right here in Wanda's too. It's called Plum Perfect, beautiful rose. Um, again, very disease uh, and insect resistant uh, or tolerant, I should say. Um, but the other thing is, you can tell our volunteers haven't been here, so we haven't deadheaded recently, which even with these shrub roses, um, you're going to get more flowering if you do deadheading. So that's something that um, we do on an ongoing basis throughout the year. It's another uh, Cordes. Uh, this is, these are a little shrub uh, slash hybrid tea roses, so they not only look great in the landscape, but they also make good uh, cutting roses to bring inside. If you look to the back here, past the, uh, the rose garden, um, are some of our greenhouses. Um, we also do uh, research with ornamentals out here, um, but we also have a very active Master Gardener uh, program, the East Baton Rouge Parish Master Gardeners, who help support us as well. Um, they have a big plant cell uh, every year. Unfortunately, this year we weren't able unable to hold the cell, uh, but stay tuned. Next spring, we will be back with more plants uh, for those people who are plant lovers. Um, so that will be occurring um, usually uh, the first week of April. Um, there's another favorite of mine, and it's actually over here on the other side. We'll walk to it right now. Um, it is raspberry swirl, and it is really a climbing rose. Um, it can be used in the landscape as a, a shrub type rose or hybrid tea type rose, but um, it does get big, so it's going to have to have continued uh, cutback. But one thing that's nice about raspberry swirl is um, it because it's so vigorous, um, it doesn't have to be deadheaded as much and will just continue to produce new shoots. Um, and really, more so in, again, the spring and again in the fall, we have a next flush of bloom. So we'll come back in here um, usually about August, do a major pruning again so that we'll get another flush of roses and bloom um, for the month of October. So this is raspberry swirl right here. And it's, it's just, uh, I'm sorry, I said raspberry swirl. Alan Owings is probably cringing. It's raspberry cream twirl. That's gorgeous. So walking through the roses, we'll come to the other side here. And we're going to go through what we call the oak grove. Um, 
Besides uh, being a research station in a gardens, we also have a message-centric audience that we focus on, and that is children and young families. So we've done a lot of work in these past 10 years of building gardens that children can enjoy and also learn from. Um, the Oak Grove here um, is a garden that was built really by our arborist, and he has different types of activities that kids can do in the Oak Grove, in the shade, um, that kids can kind of just enjoy nature, and hopefully as they enjoy nature, learn a little bit about the trees and plants that, are, are, that surround them. So, we also have, if you notice, an understory here of shrubs, and these are a part of our camellia collection. Um, we have the Vi and Hank Stone Camellia Collection here at the front of the property. Uh, this collection uh, was a donation about probably almost, almost 20 years ago now of camellias from Vi and Hank Stone who had a small postage stamp lot over by Catholic High here in Baton Rouge. And when they passed, uh, their daughter um, came to Dr. Hegwood, who was the director at the time, to see if that collection couldn't be moved to Burden. So, with a lot of hard work, sweat, um, with the Burden staff and working with the, uh, the Stone family, um, a majority of their camellias uh, were moved to the property. So, we have right now about 400 of their camellias. So, these are a lot of camellias that are known worldwide, but also some camellias that they actually bred themselves. So they were camellia experts. We've also been adding to the camellia collection over time. So if you drive through the property, you'll see other parts of the collection. Um, we have in the back at Barton Arboretum, a collection of pre, uh, camellias that were here to, in the United States pre-1900s. A lot of those camellias are starting to be lost. And so Florence Crowder and her husband Charles worked really hard over their lifetime to put to a collection together of these camellias to bring them back to the United States. So that planting's been there about three years and it's going to be a really great germplasm uh, collection uh, for looking at breeding in the future. We also have uh, part of the camellia collection in uh, Windrush Gardens. We have a very active camellia society, the Baton Rouge Camellia Society, um, that also helped move this collection here, but they do a tremendous job of propagating. So during the winter time, um, they do, and or late, uh, early spring, uh, they propagate a lot of these camellias uh, to be sold to the public for their camellia sale. So in February every year, they have a camellia show and sale and the profits from that sale um, go to help uh, maintaining and taking care of this collection over out here. So one of the things in saying that is you may have noticed with the Master Gardeners, our volunteers, the Camellia Society, um, we partner with a lot of different organizations. Um, those partnerships are very central to the core of what we do out here. For Without those partnerships, we wouldn't be able to have this wonderful green space for our community. So we really appreciate um, everything that they do to help sustain us. So back to um, the Oak Grove as part of the shaded area of the Children's Garden. We have a large hollowed out cypress here, the tunnel that kids can crawl through. Uh, this is something that was taken down by Boffingers here in town. Uh, we have good relationship with our arborist, uh, our tree companies here. And they found this tree and they thought, hey, this might be a perfect thing to bring to burden. So Glenn Wilson, our arborist, and uh, DeMichael Lucas and Conan put this up here so kids can crawl through and kind of experience what it's like to crawl through a real log. Glenn's also designed some wonderful things for kids. Uh, these are uh, teeter-totters that he's cut, uh, cut from a uh, chainsaw. Um, he's also got a little balance beam area that kids can play on. And we've also got some uh, toadstools or mushrooms over here. Um, we try to include some signage with a lot of the material that we have out here so that it kids and parents that see it, uh, even though they're experiencing it, they may also learn a little bit about what they're actually experiencing. So let's keep walking through here 
and we'll head over to uh, the Children's Garden and the Herb Garden. Another organization that we partner with is the uh, Baton Rouge Unit of the American Herb Society. And so we've started uh, the first phase, we initiated the first phase of an herb garden for them. Um, and it's basically a kitchen garden that you can learn about the different types of herbs that will grow in your kitchen. It's all raised beds and so you can learn a little bit about growing um, and maintaining herbs in your own garden too. So one of the signature features, um, as I mentioned, of Steel Burden um, is live oaks. And so the live oaks uh, that you see here, we've got a live oak alley with the big crepe myrtles. Um, these were planted by Steel Burden, um, who I might also mention was the landscaper on the LSU campus from about 1930 to 1965. So a little over 30 years, Steel Burden did the landscaping on campus, but he, a lot of times he would do the landscaping out here to test the different plants to determine what would best be used on campus. So you'll see a lot of connection between in the landscape between here and what you see on campus as well. So here we come to um, our first uh, phase of the children's garden. Um, this part of the garden is themed to be used uh, for our educational activities out here. Uh, we have docent-led programs, field trips for school children, um, but we also uh, do different uh, programs for school teachers so that they can learn uh, about um, how they can build small gardens with minimal input and utilize them in their, uh, their classroom or at their school gardens. So before um, we started this, um, we really didn't have a place that was uh, good and a safe area for children and so we decided one of the things that we had to add in here was a little bit of fencing um, and then you come into the garden and you'll first see a lot of plants along here um, that are primarily a butterfly, butterfly themed plant. So we have different things, we have kufias, salvias in here um, and over here we have a little uh, butterfly area so that kids can experience uh, not only the butterflies but also the plants um, that go along with them. We also along with this have backpack activities. So if you come out to the gardens you can go to the lobby and check out a backpack and it has activities that kids can uh, do with the children's garden when they come to it and visit. So don't forget to check out a backpack when you come out. Tyler Carr takes care of, of the children's garden um, we've made it fun with different activities for them so that they can enjoy the gardens. Um, we've also have uh, a little vegetable garden area over here. Um, this garden we plant uh, with different types of vegetables that are, can be utilized by teachers during the semester and that's kind of one of the hard things to do is um, you really got to work with teachers so that the vegetables are planted early in the year or in as early as you can in spring so that their children will get to or the students will get to enjoy some of the bounty of the harvest. So this is a demonstration for school teachers to use as far as planting and we have information along with the East Baton Rouge Parish Master Gardeners um, for school teachers. So if school teachers are looking for something for next year to do in their classes um, they can check out our website and find that as well. Oh okay. Yeah, so we also have some fruit trees here. Um, we work along with uh, Kiki, Dr. Kiki Fontenot as well, um, and Dr. Carl Motzenbucker. They do a lot of different work with school gardens across the state with the statewide uh, school garden program. Um, and so we also help uh, support those, their programs as well. So yeah, over here we have ideas on different ways that you can plant uh, in your in your school gardens, blueberries the uh, blueberries here are just getting ready to come off. Um, these blueberries like an acidic soil, and so Baton Rouge having more of kind of a heavy clay, um, more 
high pH soil. A lot of times planting blueberries in containers like this um, with a pine bark sand mix um, is going to give you the acid type of soil that they like, well drained, and as you can see they'll, they'll do quite well. Yeah, so over here on the other side of the children's garden, um, we wanted to do more education on pollinators. So our education coordinator, Sarah Rayner, um, along with um, the, uh, one of the uh, service learning classes, Dr. Mary Beth Lima in agriculture engineering uh, partnered with us. And we came up with a pollinator themed garden but we wanted it to be an interactive garden. So Mary Beth Lima's uh, class uh, has been working over the past, I think about 15 years, designing playgrounds across the uh, state of Louisiana, and they implement those playgrounds. So in that partnership, we said, hey, look, we want this to be a pollinator-themed uh, garden, and so we've got a pollinator playground that came out of it. So we worked with their class, put this uh, pollinator themed uh, children's garden together so you can come out and ride the honeybees. You can talk through the flower tubes and as I mentioned um, we also like to add some educational information along with this. So we have different uh, areas that we've got signage that tells you a little bit about what the kids are playing on. So this tells you about bees, all of their different parts, and how valuable they are to um, nature and to our flowers and our fruit and our vegetable industries. Coming over here, uh, we keep that pollinator theme. Of course, uh, you're not going to have butterflies without caterpillars. So we've got a crawl, crawl through caterpillar over here. Um, that kids can enjoy, um, along with um, a whole slew of different pollinator plants, and also plants um, that are food sources for the caterpillars and the butterflies. So things like lantana again, salvia, um, we've got dill here. Um, dill, of course, is a, a great food plant for caterpillars. Um, we also have some poofies in the background, which butterflies and bees love to feed off of. The other thing outside of the children's garden that we've been working on um, is um, developing a, a birding loop area. So I mentioned we have about three and a half miles of hiking trails um, in the woods. So this year uh, we've been working again with Dr. Ashley and Dr. Luke Laborde in Renewable Natural Resources and we've created birding loops and each of these birding loops are themed. This is part of one of the birding loops up here in front. This would be kind of a residential, what would you consider a residential or a neighborhood birding loop. So we've got bird feeder stations out here, examples of different bird feeder stations and types of bird seed that you can use to attract birds in your backyard. Uh, Sarah Rayner has been working with wild birds uh, here in Baton Rouge to, and they've helped establish these feeders here. And so we keep track of the different birds that we see through different uh, programs like Birdwatch and iBird. Other parts of the loop um, outside of the neighborhood loop is we've got the Woodlands Loop. We also have a Wetlands Loop um, to the back by the Rural Life Museum. And then at the back in the Arboretum, uh, we have an open area that we call uh, the Plains Loop. So you can experience different types of birds with the different habitats that they're in. So let's walk on through here. And so, yes, so we got the, the Peggy Martin Rose, uh, again, is part of uh, one of the as everybody knows, one of the best climbing roses that we have, um, which was a rose found by Peggy Martin after Hurricane Katrina and has been propagated wildly since. So it's, it's something that I think almost everybody, if they don't have it in their home yard, then they should be putting it there. So we'll walk up to um, the front over towards um, the conference center. And as I mentioned, um, the, we're very diverse in our botanic gardens and what we have to offer. So 
not only do we have the woodlands, um, but we also have um, the arboretum in the back. Um, the Barton Arboretum was named after Scott Barton, um, one of the founding members of the Burden Foundation. And the Burden Foundation is a foundation that was put together by the Burden family. And what it does is they help um, oversee what we do out here. Um, they work closely together with us in LSU in guiding and directing um, the progress that we do as well as the Rural Life Museum does. And also they help support us monetarily in some of the projects. So some of the things that we do out here we wouldn't be able to do without uh, the Burden Foundation. We also have a wonderful friends group. Um, the Friends of the LSU Ag Center Botanic Gardens has been in existence uh, for a little over 10 years now. Um, we embarked on a master plan for the Botanic Gardens uh, about 10 years ago and it was really spearheaded by our friends group. So they got together, it was really a group of master gardeners that got together and decided that they would like to support us um, in developing a Botanic Garden. So we've been working on that plan for about 10 years. We are at the point now where we've grown so big um, that we've actually had to look at how we're going to expand. We've kind of outgrown our master plan. So we're working with a couple of local landscape architects here in town, uh, Carbo Landscape Architects and also Susan Turner Associates, um, in updating our master plan um, and also uh, adding to it and making changes. So on the board right now, we're looking at developing um, a new welcome center that will be at the front of the property um, to welcome people um, to uh, Burden Museum and Gardens. We are one of the uh, primary, I guess, uh, places to visit in Baton Rouge in this area. And not only can people come and walk the gardens uh, and the woods and work in the, uh, see the research that's been done in the fields, but we also have the Rural Life Museum here which is another creation by Steel Burden. Um, the Rural Life Museum is celebrating 50 years of being open today. And so um, it um, has been a mainstay for people to come and visit and learn about 18th and 19th century agriculture in Louisiana. And so when you come out to Burden, what we like to say is you can experience not only the past of agriculture in Louisiana, but you can also experience the present and the future of agriculture through what we have here with the LSU Ag Center and the Botanic Gardens.